What is happening YouTube? Cowboy here. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World and this is my Sword and Shield build, The Elementalist. So the Sword and Shield all around is probably the best starter weapon in the game. This is for a couple reasons. We got slashing damage, we got blunt damage, uh, we got excellent aerial capabilities allowing us to mount the monster very easy. And probably most importantly is you can freely use items as you run around. Uh, you just quickly put your sword on your back, use your item, and then you go right back to it. It's allowing you to just pick up items, uh, you know, while you're running. You can quickly toss on mantles, things of that nature. But this build in particular is pretty different from all the builds I've uploaded so far, because when I say it's an elementalist, I mean this is a one-size-fits-all build dedicated towards doing elemental damage. Now, obviously, the weapon and some decorations will change, but that's going to be it. The gear set is static, and here it is. This is the loadout. If you want to know why we picked these pieces, make sure to stay tuned. But the general gist of this build is going to be an infinite combo with your blade and then following it up with big KO damage with the shield. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can do slashing damage via the sword. And then with the shield damage, we do KO. It's also important to note that the shield will not do elemental damage. As you can see, when I swing here, I have ice effects going out. Those ice effects do not happen with the shield at all. So you don't just want to be spamming shield the whole time because otherwise then you're, you know, you're not doing any elemental damage and you're kind of defeating the purpose of this build. So the main sword combo is going to be triangle, triangle, circle, circle. And what this is going to do is allow you to do really good DPS while fluidly staying on top of the enemy. Now there's a couple reasons we go for just triangle, triangle, circle, circle. If we go three triangles, the third attack is going to work in the shield, so we're losing some elementalness. Uh, the third triangle has a pretty long frame there. As you can see, it took a while before I was able to get out of that round slash. So while round slash does hit very hard, in testing I found that just for maximum DPS, you're going to be better off just going try, try, circle, circle. And then on the, uh, the first new triangle of the combo, you can just redirect with the left stick. Now, you don't need to go up, down, left, right. I'll show this better in the video, but very slight direction changes. You know, kind of like a... Like from, uh, I guess the best way to think of it is like attacking north, and then northeast, and then back to north, and then northeast, and then to the east. You can take very slight directional changes with it and ensure that you're going to stay on your target. So keep that in mind, and you'll be able to do just fine with that. Uh, moving on from there, let's talk about our jumps. So after any attack, you can backstep, and when you hit your charge slash, you can then follow up with either a jumping slash, or alternatively, our big damage, the falling bash. Now, the jumping slash definitively does less damage. However, this can mount the monster, so it's important to note. But the damage there was 71. The falling bash, on the other hand, will do massive KO damage, and as you can see on this pole, I'm hitting 210. So it's more than double the damage of the Falling Slash. So basically, if you're trying to mount, go for triangle off your jump. If you're trying to just do damage, go for circle. And it's worth noting that this is the most strongest attack in the arsenal of the Sword and Shield. As you saw there, that jump in. Uh, it's also important to note that, you know, when we jump in, if you're close enough, you can see we're getting hits there, even from all the way back here. There's a uh, hit that goes out as we first jump in. So you do a lot of damage with that attack when you hit it appropriately. And to help facilitate that, one thing I want to touch on is the round slash. Now, if you're standing still, circle and triangle do an advancing slash. However, after any attack, it'll do a round slash. And this is important because while it's kind of easy to just, you know, do the back step, hitting backwards and circle, if you're at a side orientation, for example, from over to the right, I gotta go backwards to the left. If I'm over to the left, I gotta go backwards to the right. And if you're slightly off, it's gonna be harder to do that back step. So while you're still learning, if you're having trouble with that, do a round slash, and then you can just press circle to do the back step. You don't have to use the directional input with it, making it a little bit easier to execute that attack. So those are our main things, the falling bash and the infinite combo. And that's how we're gonna be looking to do damage with this weapon. Um, one combo I like to go to a lot just before we move on is if the monster is about to get up, I will go through the full combo chain and then out of the round slash, go into the back step, jump forward, go up, and then do the falling bash. So, moving on to the gear set, before we jump straight into it, one thing I want to discuss in particular is elemental damage. Now, looking below my sharpness and affinity, you can see the element. In this case, I have ice, and you'll notice that it's orange. This is because I have reached the elemental cap. Even if I further augment myself 
with more ice decorations it won't matter I'm locked at 430 for this particular weapon now this varies on a weapon to weapon basis but this basically holds elemental damage back now that's not to say elemental damage can't do well in fact against a target with the appropriate weakness elemental damage performs quite admirably I'd say in some cases it's even better than physical however it is being held back now more than likely this cap will be removed with G rank and at that point you'll be able to see absolutely silly amounts of elemental damage so keep that in mind when building this while it may seem like you're a little bit weaker as long as you're fighting stuff with the appropriate weakness you'll do just fine and on top of that when G rank comes out you'll be in a great position to do loads of damage so moving on into the gear, first thing we'll do is cover the weapons. Now I actually use a mix of sword and shield and dual blades with this, but for lightning I go for the thunderbolt sword too. The only real downside here is this only gets blue sharpness. Even with handicraft it stays in blue, but it does have a hefty amount of thunder and two augmentation slots available. As for ice, the Legio Rhymespire, my personal favorite sword and shield. I absolutely adore how this thing looks. It's, it's got a very sleek, finesse feel to it. And on top of that, 330 ice, which is nothing to scoff at. As for fire, Corona. Now, Corona is certainly not the highest damage of fire. You could do better picking up some of the fire dual blades or the Anjanath sword, but this thing just looks cool. You know, it reminds me of the, uh, that, that big YouTube craze where it was like, thousand degree knife through butter, thousand degree knife through tennis ball. Except in this case, it's a thousand degree knife through a monster's face. Uh, now, as for dragon and ice, I actually go to dual blades. I like Enduring Schism a lot. It looks really cool. And then I absolutely love Holy Sabers because they're basically... Kind of like rapiers in a sense. Um, now there are decent choices for water and uh, dragon when it comes to sword and shield, but from an aesthetic perspective, I just think these look really cool, which is why I use those in my loadout. Um, especially given how kind of frumpy we already look, I figure you know I'd at least like to use weapons that I like how those look. Moving down from there though, Handicraft Charm 3. Now we're going to be going for Max Handicraft here because, as you may have seen there, every single one of these weapons can be boosted up by Handicraft. So Handicraft Charm 3, Auto Inclusion. Moving on from there, Wrath Soul Helm Beta. Main reason for this is we're going to get Critical Boost. Now the alternative to this is going to be running the Wrathalos Helm Beta, which does match better. But in my testing, I found I was getting better returns on the critical boost as opposed to the attack. Moving down from there, Rathalos Male Beta. Main reason we're picking this baby up is two points of weakness exploit. Now, a lot of people seem to be confused thinking that you can't uh, mix and match your Rathalos pieces. That's not true at all. As you can see, Rathalos Mastery, two out of two, having a Azure Wrath Helm and a regular Wrath Chest. Uh, but yeah, so weakness exploit there. Kaiser Van Brace is beta for the decoration slot and one more point in weakness exploit. Odegarin Coil Beta for two points in Critical Eye, because this is a crit-oriented build. And then, of course, Death Stench Heal for more points in Handicraft. Now, moving on into the decorations. The main decorations you're going to want to focus on in these two slots are going to be things that augment your crit. Ideally, I would like to have two critical boost jewels. I do not, so I have one. And then here I have sharp because, you know, anything that goes through sharpness fast, something like sword and shield and dual blades, sharp's a great pickup. However, you don't need either of these. You could easily slot in something like maximum might. Uh, alternatively, agitator's not a bad choice, but critical jewels would be the ideal choice in this setup. Now moving on from there, your smaller decoration slots are going to be one of two things, either critical eye or the element that you need. Now, when it comes to picking the element that you need, you're only going to get enough until you hit the cap. And even then, sometimes it's going to vary. Uh, to better show this, let me swap over. Fire is a good one to show this with. Uh, so going back into my decorations here with Corona, if I take off a blaze, let me take both blazes off. All right, so at base, Corona has 180 fire damage. If I put on one, you'll see I'll add 30 fire attack, and we can see, indeed, I'm getting 30 fire attack. I go up to 210. If I go to as a second blaze, instead of getting 60, you can see I'm only going up by another 20 here. So I'm going to be capped out at 230, and that means I've hit my elemental cap. Now, in this case, instead of going to plus 60, I'm only getting plus 50 over the base, but I still think the blaze is going to be worth it. However, if my element was only going to rise to, say, 215 or 220, I'd likely end up using another expert jewel in place of the blaze just because I'd see more value on another 5% crit as opposed to a minuscule amount of the respective element that I'm getting. So keep that in mind when you're putting on your elements. Uh, if you're not sure and you don't want to craft them in advance, what you can actually do is 
Uh, when you're previewing gear in the blacksmith, you could preview a piece of gear that has the respective elemental attack you need and see if you're going to reach the cap or not. Uh, but yeah, aside from the elements, obviously you just stack up expert jewels. I know a lot of people still don't have these, but they seem to drop like candy for me. I think I have eight, yet I still don't have an attack jewel, which is kind of irritating. But anyway, uh, let me switch this back over and we will do a quick overview of everything together. So, pull it all together and what do we get? First up, critical element. Now this is absolutely necessary to the build, no questions asked. Without this, you are doing, you know, all, the, all this crit we're getting is for nothing. So you have to have Wrathless Mastery. Uh, moving on from there, critical eye is at level five. Now this is gonna vary between like level three, sometimes up to level six. But the point is, this is your main filler. You just want to get Critical Eye because we're looking to crit as much as possible. Handicraft 5, both because it's going to help boost our elemental damage, having things up at white sharpness. And on top of that, we're going to be burning through sharpness pretty quick with this weapon. Uh, elemental Attack, obviously only go as high as you need to to reach the cap. And keep in mind what I said about you know not dedicating a whole gem slot if you're only getting like 5. Uh, moving on from there, Weakness Exploit level 3, that gives us 50% affinity on top of the 20 we have here. Of course, Critical Boost, which I would prefer to have at level 3, and then Protective Polish is simply a filler for the time being. Now keep in mind that none of these weapons are augmented, but in general you could hit uh, 80, 90, in some cases 100% affinity with this setup, ensuring that you are getting very high returns on your investment in Critical Element. And that's really all there is to this build. I mean, it, it's pretty straightforward. It definitely takes a bit more farming since you need to have multiple weapons to it. But at the end of the day, even though physical damage is great as kind of an all-rounder option, I actually find it kind of fun specializing out on a monster-to-monster -monster basis. It adds a little bit more variety into the mix. And on top of that, elemental damage really isn't that bad. I mean, I, I wasn't really a fan of it with a light bow gun, but I will say that in Sword and Shield and Dual Blades, it can definitely hold its own. And we're about to show you guys that in just a moment. So for our hunt, we're going to be going after Teostra. I've been wanting to fight him for a while and just, you know, I was unsure of what would be the best weapon to showcase maximum badassery against Teostra. And an ice sword and shield is a pretty good choice, in my opinion. You know, he's, he has a three-star weakness to ice. And on top of that, the fact that we can basically instantly use flash pods just makes it that much spicier, so... Come here, Tio. Oh! Trying to get a quick KO here, close to the start. Not playing the blast blight game. Get that weak shit out of here. Now I could mount him quite easily, but um, to be honest, mounting for the most part is going to be a DPS loss with Sword and Shield. It's very easy to mount, and in a team-based setting, yeah, you're the one that should be getting on that monster and bringing it down so everyone else can beat on it. But if I'm just playing Sword and Shield alone, probably not going to waste the time mounting, because the triple strike you get at the end of a mount really isn't that effective damage-wise. You know, all the time that I'm up on top of it, sitting there spamming the uh, the attack button, it's just kind of the DPS. It's it's not worth it. Oh, that was a good KO. 
And typically I'd sit here and do damage right now, but since I'm almost out of blue, I'm going to go ahead and reapply protective polish for good measure. And let's put on our fireproof. Oh man, I thought I rolled through that. Uh, another thing which I didn't mention before, but you know, even though it's not the biggest shield, you do have a shield. And as such, you can use it to block things like roars or giant attacks or anything else which may be a threat to you. Let's go ahead and pop this real fast. You can see how I'm making very, very slight turns with my moves. You know, you don't need to do like a full like up, down, left, right. You can just do slight diagonal changes to ensure you stay right on the target. No, get that shit out of here. You actually think you're gonna get off a of supernova, you silly bitch. No, Tio. What did I tell you about running away? That's very, very rude. And back into the KO. And Tiostra is down. Don't shoot your beginner weapon. No, but seriously, while this is a fantastic weapon for beginners, once you know what you're doing with it, and especially with like an elemental build coupled with the right element against the right target, you can clearly do some just monstrous damage. Like, I'm pretty sure that's a sub five minute kill with Sword and Shield. And I wouldn't even consider myself very good with Sword and Shield. This is kind of like the, uh, the Gun Lance, you know? I, I really... Picked the sword and shield up not too long ago. It was just kind of like, you know, this is cool. Like back in the beta, I played it and I was all about the Superman punch. That's the whole, that's the whole thing for me with the sword and shield. Just being like, oh, 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 and then jumping up for the Superman. That's my favorite part. But either way, let's see what kind of time we got on our TO. Or 50, 63. Not too shabby for the beginner weapon, right? Either way, guys, thanks for coming by and checking out the build. I really do think this is a really fun build, and, you know, it's, it's very different from the usual just stack attack, bro. So, uh, a nice change of pace, if you will. But either way, if you enjoyed the video, likes are always appreciated, and any questions or comments you may have, make sure to drop those down below. And with that being said, we will catch you guys next time with another... Monster Hunter World build video.